In the last lecture, we talked about the chemotherapy of tuberculosis. In today's lecture, let's study about the chemotherapy of leprosy. Now, leprosy is a chronic contagious skin disease which affects the skin, mucous membrane and nerves, causing serious and permanent damage of the body including loss of fingers, nose, etc. It's derived from a Greek word meaning scaly. The causative agent being Mycobacterium leprae. There are first line drugs and second line drugs. First line including rifampicin, dapsone, clofazamine, ethionamide, and proteonamide, and second line drugs such as quinolones, minocycline, and clarithromycin, which are used in the treatment of leprosy. In posibacillary, leprosy rifampicin 600 mg once a month and dapsone 100 mg daily is administered for six months whereas in multibacillary leprosy rifampicin 600 mg once a month dapsone 100 mg daily along with clofazamine 300 mg once a month and 50 mg daily self-administered is given for 12 months Clofazamine can be substituted by 250 to 375 mg daily dose of ethionamide. Starting with Dapsone. Now, Dapsone is the simplest, oldest, cheapest, and most active drug which is used in the treatment of leprosy. It's a diamino diphenyl sulfone, chemically related to sulfonamides. So, it has the same mechanism of action. It inhibits the incorporation of PABA into folic acid. At low concentrations, it is leprostatic, but at higher concentrations, it is also effective against a lot of bacteria which are sensitive to sulfonamides. However, the dose required is too toxic, so it's not used. It's useful in leprosy, P. falciparum malaria, toxoplasmosis, and dermatological disorders like dermatitis, herpetiformis. Its pharmacokinetics are that it's completely and rapidly absorbed from the GI tract on oral administration, widely distributed in the body and tissue fluids. It's concentrated in skin, muscle, liver, and kidney. It's metabolized by acetylation and also glucuronide and sulfate conjugation the metabolites of which are ultimately excreted in the urine. It's 70% plasma protein bound. Its adverse effects include hemolytic anemia in patients with G6PD deficiency. Its reactive metabolites such as thyroid peroxidase can also lead hypothyroidism and goiter in patients. It can cause blood dysgrasia such as agranulocystosis and lepra reactions in lepromatous leprosy. Sensitization of skin can lead to exfoliative dermatitis and also in some patients there is anorexia, nausea and vomiting. So Dapsone, it's a diamino diphenyl sulfone which inhibits Power by incorporation into folic acid, leprostatic. It's metabolized by acetylation and causes hemolysis, lepra reaction, and exfoliative dermatitis as side effects in patients. Coming to rifampicin, as we've already discussed, rifampicin in the drugs used in tuberculosis, we can recall that it's a highly bactericidal drug which inhibits the synthesis of RNA by inhibiting DNA dependent RNA polymerase. A single dose of 1500 mg can kill about 99% of the viable bacteria, which is why it can be conveniently administered once a month. It's uh, as you can see here, it binds to DNA-dependent RNA polymerase and inhibits RNA synthesis. Its available doses being 150, 300, 450 and 600 mg. Now its 
Adverse reactions include skin rashes, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, oliguria, dyspnea, dizziness, and orange discoloration of body fluids. So there is a harmless orange discoloration of body fluids such as saliva, sputum, tears, and sweat, and even the contact lenses. So a patient has to be aware of it. It can also cause flu-like syndromes in such pa pa uh, some patients associated with the, you know, fever, chills, and body pain. Uh, it's contraindicated in hepatic dysfunction because it's highly hepatotoxic. And in patients with G6PD deficiency, it causes hemolytic anemia. It can also lead to hypersensitivity reactions and skin rashes, etc. So, rifampicin or for rifampicin or for inhibiting RNA synthesis, given once a month, highly hepatotoxic, causes hemolytic anemia, orange discoloration, hypersensitivity reactions, and contraindicated in hepatic dysfunction. Coming to clofazamine. Now, clofazamine is a riaminophenazine dye, which is leprostatic and anti-inflammatory. It's orally active, accumulates in macrophages, and gets deposited in many tissues, including subcutaneous fat, as needle-shaped clusters. It's excreted through bile and urine. It interferes with the template function of DNA and inhibits transcription. It also disrupts mitochondrial electron transport chain and leads to alteration of membrane structure and transport function. Now, a very important point about clofazamine is that being a dye, it can cause reddish black discoloration of skin, hair and body secretions. As you can see here, it can also lead to dryness of skin and itching and acne from eruption and also phototoxicity. It might also cause nausea, anorexia, abdominal pain and weight loss. In patients who cannot tolerate clofazamine and the reddish black discoloration of skin, Ethionamide is administered, which is also significant antileprotic, but more expensive and poorly tolerated and more hepatotoxicity. It can cause gastric irritation, peripheral neuritis. So how you can remember is clofazamine starts with C. So it causes coloration of the skin. Apart from ethionamide, proteonamide can also be used. The second line drugs were minocycline, clarithromycin, and fluoroquinolones. Minocycline, which is a highly penetratable tetracycline due to its high lipophilicity, can easily penetrate into M. leprae. Clarithromycin is a macrolide antibiotic, and a fluoroquinolone such as Ofloxacin can also be used because of it being leprosidal in a multi-drug regime. So second line drugs include minocycline, clarithromycin and fluoroquinolone such as ofloxacin which can be used in a multi-drug regimen. Lepra reactions which is the last topic of this video. Now these are immunologically mediated reactions that can occur during the course of the disease. These are triggered by acute infections, stress, anxiety, and treatment with dapsone. Lepra reactions can be of two types. They can be type 1 and type 2. Type 1 are cell-mediated delayed type. Cutaneous ulceration show more erythema and there's nerve damage associated. Type 2 include type 3 hypersensitivity reaction which mainly occur in leptomatous leprosy. There is arrhythmia nodosum which is a red, painful, tender, cutaneous and subcutaneous. 
there is also nerve damage. This can be managed with corticosteroids such as prednisolone and clofizamine. Clofizamine because as you can recall it's anti-inflammatory as well apart from being leprostatic. Or drugs such as thalidomide and chloroquine may also and have to be used. In uh, unsever severe cases we can use aspirin as well. So this was all about drugs used in the treatment of uh, leprosy and the main drugs being Dapsone and Rifampicine. Hope this lecture helped you and thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for more.